Hello everyone, Trophy One Hunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm really excited to bring you a review of the Torres 1982 Mas La Plana. How did I get my hands on this bottle? I was at dinner at Picasso restaurant, which I will do a review of and will put at the end of this video. And um, they have a great wine list and of the wines, I picked up some great wines, but this was one of them. They have some really great Spanish wines, including Masapana, back to the original vintage of 1970. And the price was $255 for this bottle. I thought it was an exceptional deal to be able to taste an old wine like this. So Maslapana is produced by Torres. Torres, of course, is a very famous family, winemaking family in Spain, from known from the pen, for, for really uplifting the Penedes region. And really this wine is responsible for a lot of the attention of the non-Tempranillo grape, or you can call the, um, you know, how Italian as Super Tuscans, the Super Spanish wines, right? Because this was the first wine that was produced by the, um, with Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. And it was first produced in 1970, and in fact, Picasso Restaurant does have the first vintage. That was the vintage that put um, Spanish wines on the map, because previous to that, Spanish wines were made by Tempranillo grape. And most um, drinkers in North America and, and I guess in France were not familiar or didn't give a lot of respect to the Tempranillo grape. They always liked Cabernet. And so this was the first wine that made was made by Cabernet grape. And what happened was that they won a competition. Just like the Judgment in Paris in 1970, there was a wine Olympics in 1979 that was put on by, I think, a um, French publication. And uh, they had different wines. But this wine won best in class. Um, and I think beat out wines like Chateau Latour in a blind tasting. So that really created uh, this was really the forefront and the forefather of great notable wines from Spain and really gave a lot of attention to Spain. There's so many things historical about, about this bottle and so interesting to drink history. So first of all we start with the um, name of the wine Maslapana but it also you can see on old bottles like this it says Grand Coronas. So Grand Coronas um, the reason why is that we're going to go back in time to 19, the 1970s and the 1980s. And at that time, Grand Coronas was actually the, the Torres family high-end label. And so you can see that's in large letters. And the small letters is Maslopana, which is the individual vineyard. Now, Maslopana, Grand Coronas is more associated with um, entry-level wines from Torres. And so and Maslopana, of course, is their flagship wine. So in, um, I, th I don't know when they start to change this, but in older bottles, you'll see Grand Coronas, Maslopana on the bottom. In newer bottles, you won't even see Grand Coronas. You'll just see uh, Maslopana. The other difference is that over the years, right now, Maslopana is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. Over the years, that's changed. The original 1970 bottle was about, I think, 80% Cabernet Sauvignon with a little bit of Tempranillo, I think a little bit of Cabernet Franc. And that changed, I think, in 1978. Um, and then they, you know, so this bottle also is 100% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. The other thing about interesting things, you'll see a black label. And I think, um, what I've seen in the literature is that it's why is it a black label? It's because the person that produced this wine was a black sheep in terms of when they first produced the wine. I think the people that owned the winery weren't thrilled with it, and so that's why it wasn't released, I think, till 1979, even though the first vintage was 1970. You also see that it's a burgundy type bottle, which is unusual for a Cabernet wine. Um, and the reason for that is very simple. At that time, when they were bottling these, that's all they had. They had these type of bottles. And so they sent this off and then it went to the Paris, the Wine Olympic competition at one. And because it won, they never changed it back. And to this day, it's still in a burgundy bottle, even though it's Cabernet Sauvignon. Why I'm drinking this is because I'm so interested in these wines historically. 
And that's the difference between, I think, for me as a wine enthusiast and a wine lover. It's not about scores. I don't really care about the score as much as experience. And to be able to drink this wine, and you'll see my score at the end of this, is probably not as high as you think. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the experience. Um, I compare it to if you meet like, um, you know, old artists that I enjoy like in the 80s, like uh, Boys to Men or Air Supply or whoever. You know, if you see them in concert today, they're not the same as when they were popular, but I still really enjoy them and it's a big thrill to me. Or if you meet like, if I ever got a chance to meet Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson is not the fighter he was, you know, 20 years ago in his prime, but is it not, it's still thrilling to see him. And that's how I compare these wines. They may not be the same, um, you know, in terms of points, you might be disappointed, but it's a thrill of drinking something and experience, uh, history. And also when you love wine, you also respect the history of wine. Um, you'll have to understand that wine making and wine tastes have changed so much. So the 82 to understand current Maslapana, I think you have to drink old Maslapana. And so you can't really understand that without trying these wines. And it's very hard to get these wines that are in tip top shape. So the history of this wine, again, it's a, it's a much more burgundy style. And when we were back in the 70s and 80s, people were much more patient with wine. They expected things that were um, a little bit different in taste. Now, I think the taste palette is much more bold. So. In, so you'll see that with the blend and you also see stylistically the fruit in modern Maslapana is going to be much more f intense and forward. And this style of wine is a little bit more austere um, compared to the modern style. Here's the bottle. So I'm don't, I can't figure out what that is in Spanish. I'll have it in the comments section. 1982 Torres. Again, it used to be called Gran Coronas. The first vintage in 1970. Maslapana, Grand Reserva, that is a character of aging. With the old bottles, each label was different. So this is specific for the 1982 vintage. It shows the actual conditions um, in 1982. Um, it was aged in new casts of American and French oak for six months. And then in the second and third year of oak casts until bottling in November 1984. It's really specific what they had. I'm going to taste this wine and you can see I do not have a proper wine glass. And you will note from my other videos that whenever I travel, I don't go and travel with wine glasses. I just, and um, of course I had it in a proper wine glass in Picasso, but I, of course I didn't film there. Now it's a day later. I'm in my hotel room. And one thing is the Park MGM, I phoned their, um, their uh, room service and I asked for glasses and they said yes we can give you a glasses trophy but we're gonna charge you so I'm sorry I'm not gonna pay for glasses so I'm just gonna drink out of my mug here I'm so sorry but um, I also have notes from my tasting that night so I know this is it's kind of a little bit thick because I'm, I'm not really smelling it. I'm just showing you guys, but I know I remember what I smelled when I was at the restaurant. When you smell it, it does have that Spanish influence. It um, does have that spiciness, a little bit of leathery, leatheriness and um, yeah, a little bit like uh, spice. Um, uh, you'll have that little bit tinge. Um, so that was kind of the smell of it. On the taste, the first thing I thought was it is burgundy in style when it came out. Burgundy with a little bit of spice, which of course burgundy normally doesn't have. Today you taste it, it's got that leathery component to it. It's got that little cherry component to it. Um, and almost like a little bit like a Swedish berries, that type of um, taste to it. Very pleasant wine. It's obviously fully mature at this point but um, my score is going to be 87 points and you're going to say trophy 87 points that's a lousy score no it's not I'm so thrilled to drink this wine because again we're drinking history 
and as a student of wine you can follow this and it will allow me to appreciate the the historical roots of Maslapana so that when I drink Maslapana uh, currently which I think is really really good um, I can understand where they came from uh, the other thing with current Maslapana now that those um, stock of Cabernet vines have now been there for 40 years um, it's gonna produce much more intense uh, taste so this is really the raw form of Maslapana this is with fairly little knowledge not a lot of modern knowledge uh, with younger vines and so you're really tasting it at a lighter stage and really tasting i think more um, non-manipulative non -manipulative, um, cabernet sauvignon from the maslatana vineyard yeah so i could drink this all day long it would be great with Spanish tapas, quite frankly. I had it actually with um, some fried chicken late night. It was spectacular. Um, it's really easy drinking, um, not offensive at all. And um, it's not going to last a long time. But um, I thought it was really enjoyable and a spectacular experience for me. Until next time, happy drinking.